Really important on this, I'm just going to show you how to put an RJ45 connector on the end of a Cat5 cable. Okay, so this is um, used for the BMS, it's used for CT clamps, it's used for the Modbus cabling. All the data cables generally are Cat5 or Cat6, and the Solax inverters seem to work fine with the Cat5 cable, and uh, that's what I actually ran under my house for my CT clamp. Firstly, the tools we'll need. This is a uh, Cat5 crimping tool, and um, we're going to be using the 8-pin side of it. The 6-pin is used mainly for telephone. So data network cable uses the 8-pin. Um, these are fairly cheap. They're about uh, £10. Um, this isn't a particularly good one, but it does the job for the times that I need to do it. Uh, secondly, you'll need to strip the outside insulation off the Cat5 cable and uh, this is a, a cable stripping tool. And the last thing you'll need are a small pair of side cutters. So fine ones that uh, come together well, fine side cutters, not big pliers. And the last thing, um, you're going to need some cable. So this is uh, going to be one end of your data cable and uh, this is a cable relief and it keeps it a little bit weatherproof and this is an RJ45 Crimpon plug. So they're all the things that you're going to need, and I'll show you how to do it next. All right, so starting with a Cat5 cable, we're going to use the sheathing stripper first, just to take off up to about five centimeters of the outside sheathing. So just roll it around with your finger like that. It cuts the outer sheath, but doesn't cut the inner cores. And um, you can see we've got four sets of twisted paired cables inside. This extra one here is a piece of string and this is used so you don't put strain on the cables when you pull them through conduit. So you can just uh, cut that off with your side cutters. Now the first thing to do is not to forget putting on the strain relief, um, which I should have done already. Okay, so just put on the strain relief first onto the cable and then just push that along out of the way until we put the connector on. So what is important is the order of the wires inside. We've got um, orange stripe orange, green stripe green, blue stripe blue, brown stripe brown. All right, and they're going to need to go in a certain order inside the connector. So what you need to do is just spend a couple of minutes preparing the cables, untwisting them, and making sure the order is correct. So I'm going to untwist the oranges. Untwist them right back to the sheathing here, as far as you can. That's one, two. Untwist the greens. Untwist the blue. They're all twisted at um, different ratios. It's so that they cancel each other out so there isn't noise in the signal. So some are twisted tighter than others. and the brown one. Twisting, untwisting them right back. So we'll start to assemble the correct order. So we need orange stripe first, and then orange, and then green stripe, and then blue. So the blue one's gonna come in here. You're then going to need blue stripe, and then green, and brown stripe, and brown. And that is the order for a standard RJ45 connector. You can see that uh, all the wires are very wiggly. And wiggly wires are no good, they need to be straight. So just spend a minute straightening the wires and trying to bring them close together to look like a ribbon. Okay, so I'm just going to use my fingers here to uh, straighten all the wiggles out of the wires. And you can see I'm just starting to uh, get them looking a little bit straighter. Once you've started to get them straighter, you need to bundle them together in the correct order. So keeping the order as, as it is, just start to bundle them together so they start to look like a ribbon like this. And when you've made a ribbon like this, try to make the ribbon as straight as possible. So just use your fingers, wiggle it from side to side, just bend it slightly and try to get the wires as straight as you can. So they need to be straight and all together 
And when you've done that, check that they're still in the same order. So we need orange stripe orange, green stripe blue, blue stripe green, and brown stripe and brown. And they look to be in the correct order to me and are looking very much like a ribbon. Next, take your connector, RJ45 connector. Now many people make a mistake here, they just push the wires in, leave it dangling out of the end, crimp it and hope for the best and that's not how an RJ45 is supposed to be done. The outside sheathing here is supposed to be crimped inside the connector and that forms part of the strain relief. So it's important that you measure exactly how long the wires are going to be inside the plug. So bring the sheathing up to here where this ridge is and measure with your fingernail how long the wires need to be at the end. And if I just uh, switch hands because I'm right handed, take my side cutters and I'm going to cut them off straight across like that and then hold them so they don't change position or get out of alignment. Now I'm going to offer them straight into the uh, RJ45 connector without letting go so um, they can't go anywhere. It's really diff awkward if they go anywhere. Now as you push them in, each one should find its own channel um, towards the end of the connector. And you can see the grey sheathing has gone up to here where I intended. And if you look at the end, you can see all the little wires have touched the end. It's important to be able to see them there so that you know they're being crimped into the connectors when you use the tool. So keep that pushed in, wiggle it in to the end, pick up your RJ45 crimping tool, plug it into the 8 pin socket and press the handles together until they touch and they don't go anymore and then release it and pull it out of the tool. And that is one RJ45 connector crimped on. Bring up the strain relief that you put on before and then just uh, wiggle it over the connector like that. And that is now ready and you can see all the colours in the right order touching the end and uh, it's crimped on well. So that's ready for your CT clamp or to go into the BMS port RS485 or uh, CT port of your inverter. Thanks for watching and um, I'll see you again in the next video.